Welcome back to Karen Creek. All right, today we're gonna jump into some maple. We're gonna fire up the wood miser. All right, let me start, let me start over. So we got this maple. This maple's been cut for a while. It's down to about 18, 20% moisture. So it's pretty close to what I'm gonna use it for. It's gonna be interior siding down in the hay burner barn. You know, when we cut this, we don't have an edger. So the table saw will take forever, but these are going to, to butt up pretty much like here in the milk shop. But if you look down this, as it dries, it kind of goes up and down a little bit. So it's not exactly straight. So after it's dry, or what I consider to be dry, we're gonna edge it on the sawmill. We're gonna stack a bunch up, zoom, get some nice, clean, straight edges. The wood module can do that, right? So, easy peasy, let's jump into it. Something else that you should probably know. This maple here, back when I cut it, I had no plans for it. I just knew I wanted one inch thick boards, but I had no particular permanent home for this maple. And I don't know if it's right or wrong. I pretty much cut what I can get. If I can get a 10 inch board, I cut 10 inch boards. If I can get a six, I do a six. It'd be cool to go with a six inch board and go with a 10, seven, just have like a random pattern. And maybe like I said, maybe that's not how to do it. Maybe people do it differently. More experienced sawmill owners. Maybe they do it different, but for me, that's how I usually do it. Unless, unless I know I have a particular project. If I know exactly what I'm doing with this lumber, yeah, then I'll custom cut it to the, to the width I think I need, the thickness and whatnot. But when I'm just randomly cutting to play, I guess, on the wood miser, which is nothing wrong with that, that's how I do it. They weren't standing up plumb, so I had to shim, just throw a little shim on that clamp to help get these uh, plumb and perpendicular with the saw blade. I like ready to cut now. all your dreams come true I know a lot of you guys already know something like this but I want to show you a little trick that I always do so like right now I need to cut a bunch of boards 37 and a half inches like there's 13 I got to cut so here's what I'll do 37 and a half that is correct right there I go up to my mark so that's my stop for cutting 37 and a half and then I'll get the board this is what makes it nice. I don't have to measure each one. Hey guys, I'm being super lame, but it's Saturday night, 8.30. I'm just, I'm whooped for the day. So I'm gonna head home and catch up on YouTube's myself. And that's what I want to ask you guys, you guys that's watching this channel. I want to ask you who all you guys watch on YouTube. Uh, I like to watch Out of the Woods, Outdoors with Morgans. I used to watch Rangerstar, not so much anymore. There's a couple local guys I watched, Brian's Farming Videos. Uh, he's a friend of mine and he has several, he's got a huge YouTube channel, doing super well. He just hit 100,000 actually about the same time that Nathan from Out of the Woods hit 100,000 subscribers. And actually, Nathan claims he watches our channel, so we'll see if he catches this in the comments because I've talked with Nathan and a couple other guys about doing some collaborations. Uh, they say if a, a small time channel like yourself can get with a bigger channel, and if you both have a benefit, like if I can go help them do something, that's my contribution to help Karen Creek grow. Yeah, drop us a comment. I'm gonna go get some rest, but while you're waiting for me to come back to the mill shop in the morning, let's go ahead and throw a little episode of JSF Experience in here right now. It's a sewer line we've done in town. On the JSF Experience today, we find ourselves inside for the time being. Let's show you what we're doing. Here we are looking at the back of this home. That is the main sewer line going out, going out the back of the house, and then it wraps around to the front of the house. We have a problem about 10 feet out in the back of the house. The problem is, after this home was constructed, they built a room addition in the back, and that room addition is over top of that sewer line. So our solution is to reroute the sewer line out the front of the house. We're gonna cut it out to the front, excavate a new line out to the city's main sewer line. Alright guys, day two in the basement again. It's beautiful outside. I can't wait to get outside and do something outside. Took forever to saw this concrete. It got really deep. We were up to eight inches here in the center. Had to get a jackhammer, you saw that. 
we got to catch this four drain, catch this downstairs bathroom, and re-slope it all to the front. Easy peasy, right? Although we've got a hot mess, it's coming together. The next big task is going to be burrowing under the foundation footer. That's going to be a nightmare. We'll have to fix that. at it Sunday morning now so we got a whole day of Sunday to play and be productive out here at Cairn Creek so here's what we're gonna do I've got a pile of boards that are ready they're trimmed they're edged and they are ready to go down and start putting up so let's send the downstairs the tack room and the horse barn I think not playing them gives them that rustic look it's a good transition piece from the downstairs to the upstairs you'll see what I mean once we get down there and start getting them up but uh, yeah good morning let's get to it oh and I do have an assistant today. I got Coco Bobo up. Uh, right now it's muzzleloader season, so he's going to help me for a little bit, and then we're going to do some muzzleloader hunting. We really got to get that cabin up on the hill, but it's just too daggone muddy. It's a, uh, I mean, you can kind of see here in the driveway, just had a lot of rain the last couple weeks. Guys, I'm itching to get that up there. I really am. That's a lovely project I'm excited about, but it's just been too wet. Coco's tightening up insulation. Let's show you what we're going to do down here. All right, so we have this wall. We've we've previewed this wall before. That's the stairs, obviously, and then there's going to be like a, an open pass-through, a view-through to the upstairs. So this is where the maple's going to go. It's going to go on this, this wall you see here to the bare insulation. We've got our boards down here. I've got the compressor. We're going to use finish nails. section done still don't have this section done but that sections 
almost done. So what I gotta do now is the window trim. I am gonna go ahead and plane that. I can see a lot of dust getting on this stool. So it'd be nice to be able to wipe that off, wipe the, you know, around the windows off. So we're gonna go ahead and, I got my list right here. We're gonna go up and cut those and plane those. And now to clean that up, we've got a piece of trim that goes in the corner. To hide that, we'll have a piece of trim that runs up the uh, stringer here. It looks cool. Well, I think it looks cool. Like I said earlier when I, when I talked about the transition, so this here is plywood, but we're gonna cut strips to make it look like board batten. This will, this will be covered with shelves and saddles and, and all that stuff, but this piece here, I believe it helps get us our transition from kind of plywood, and then we're easing into the finished room upstairs. That's the transition I was talking about. But Coco got a uh, new muzzle loader for Christmas. So we're gonna go put that in the gun sled, get some lunch, get a bologna sandwich or something, and we're gonna fire that gun, or that, we're gonna fire that muzzle loader. Make sure it's uh, pretty accurate. He shot a couple times, but not from the sled. I would like to start in the sled to make sure it's, it's pretty good. Sure. Got the boards plane, heading back down. And let me tell you, Coco came in here after he fired that gun and cleaned it. I know it's called YouTube, not smell tube, but it stinks so bad. I mean, it stinks bad, especially when you go outside and walk back in, woo. Before we get back into it, I wanted to show you guys one more thing before we get back downstairs. The drywall, one more coat of drywall, some sanding, and it'll be done. And I've been meaning to tell you guys, I guess I need to show you guys how you finish drywall. You get your phone out, you call your old buddy that knows how to do drywall, and you say, hey, can I pay you to do this drywall? That's how you do drywall. <laughs> drywall sucks. All right, we're getting this one together. We got the stool down on the bottom here, and got these side pieces we're gonna go ahead and put up. And I'll show you a close up, but I always like to leave a little reveal here. I am not a trim carpenter at all, not even close. I'm more like a hammer carpenter. Hammer it in. Here's that reveal I was referring to is this little this gap here. It just helps clean everything up. I mean, everything's not straight, especially dealing with this rough cut lumber. I mean, I know I planed it down, but it's still, it's not perfect. But it's projects like that. If you're new to the channel, I wish you'd jump in and subscribe, but if you're new to the channel, you're new to watching what we're doing, this is part of what's so awesome with having that Woodmother Saw Mills. We can create things like this. It's a story that's told for years just because it's lumber that we made from this property. We cut ourselves. Uh, this makes the whole experience more exciting, more interesting, and that's that's what we dig. So if you're in the market for Woodmizer, like I always say, just get in the game. If you say you're too old, you're not. I just seen on Facebook some guys, uh, 65 just ordered one. Uh, and if you're young, man, how cool to be to be young again, because I would have got a wood miser when I was like 20. So I've lost 20 years of my wood miser life because I, I didn't know that it was so cool. But So if you're young, old, 40 something like me, just get in the game. Remember all that tough guy drywall pump? Oh yeah, there's a caveat. <laughs> if it's just a small piece, you can put it up yourself. Now with that little piece of drywall, I can go ahead and finish my corner trim. That makes me happy. All right, guys, we got that done. It looks fantastic. That is exactly how I wanted that to look. I'm so happy with this getting done. Now it's up to Miss Kim to get some staining done and just finish that off. Drywall should be done tomorrow. It's moving along. Weather's looking good. Oh my goodness, the weather should be perfect for this weekend to maybe get up on the hill to work on that cabin. Maybe not really exciting for you, but it's heavy equipment, it's outside. I myself am pumped about that possibility of good weather to get that cabin job to the next level. So having said that guys, once again, another solid episode. Thanks for watching, thanks for working with us. Karen Creek, over and out.